Alright, it's Henry again, and this is my redo of my water slide decal tutorial video. Now, uh, my first one, uh, there was some stuff that I could have explained better and some stuff that I left out, like I didn't cover Mr. Mark Setter in the first tutorial, so I uh, deleted that one and now I'm uploading a new water slide tutorial. So, uh, water slide decals are basically uh, markings that you put on your model kits that uh, you use water to activate the adhesive and then they simply slide off of their paper backing and you place them on a model kit. Uh, it's as simple as that. So uh, there's several different ways you can get water slide decals. Some Bandai kits come with them, uh, not many. The more recent uh, Verka Master Grades, uh, some of the like UC Hard Graph kits, and uh, a handful of other Bandai kits. Like that, I think the Bandai Macross kits come with water slides. So Bandai is kind of hit and miss when it comes to water slides. Kotobukiya, Hasegawa, uh, pretty much every other model kit company comes with water slides standard. And I really, really wish Bandai would do that, but they don't. So. But Bandai kind of halfway makes up for it by offering uh, water slide Gundam decal sets for a lot of their kits. Not every single one of them, obviously, but a lot of them do uh, have these Gundam decals that you can buy. This is actually a miscellaneous set for HGUC MSV Zakus. And you can also get uh, decals from third parties. These are some decals from Wave, just generic caution markings and letters and stuff. Uh, these are from High Q Parts as well. These are from Vertex. And uh, also, Samuel Decal is an option. You can uh, go to him and have him print out custom decals for you. So, lots of different places you can get water slides. Uh, as far as the tools you will need to use water slides, you'll obviously need some water. Don't need a whole lot, just a little cup is enough. Uh, uh, you will need a cotton swab and I would recommend a hobby knife, a small pair of scissors if you can find them. Uh, regular scissors tend to be a bit too big because uh, a lot of these decals are very small and delicate so I recommend seeing if you can find some small like sewing scissors or something like this. Uh, a pair of tweezers is definitely a must. and. Uh, sort of optional. You don't need these, but they do make uh, your decals turn out a lot better. Mr. Mark Setter. This is basically like decal uh, glue. It helps the decal stick onto the kit better. And then Mr. Mark Softer. This uh, softens the decals. You don't need to use this every time, but if you're using decals on a curved surface or along panel lines, this will soften the decal and help you get all the wrinkles out. So, I am going to just uh, demonstrate how to apply them real quick. This is just a uh, piece of a strike gun I got out of my scrap box. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your little sliver of decal paper. This is just a piece that I've cut out from the decal sheet. And I'm going to dunk this in water for a few seconds. Take that out and I'm going to let that sit for about 30 to 60 seconds and let the water really kind of uh, work its magic and loosen those decals up. Uh, you want to take your cotton swab and just put a little bit of water on the end. You don't need it soaking wet but just a little water will do it. And uh, after you know 30 or 60 seconds you can uh, touch the decals gently and sort of uh, do a small circular motion and when they start to move around that's when you know they're ready to apply to the part. So these are actually some decals I've just been working with today so I'm going to move these out of the way. And uh, the hobby knife is basically just for cutting uh, down to get the individual decals you need because you don't want to get the whole sheet wet because that's just going to be a disaster trust me and um, once the paper does dry out if you let it sit long enough uh, the water will evaporate and the decals will become stuck to the paper once again if that happens 
just put it back in the water wait a few seconds and they should loosen up once again so I am going to take a little bit of this mark setter and you do not need a whole lot of it I'm going to put my decal right here in the corner I'll just put a little dot right there like so I'm going to zoom in a bit and then with oops, my cotton swab I'm just going to grab the decal and a lot of like in the instruction manuals for the model kits they say get the actual decal paper and do like that and then you can position your decal get it exactly where you want it to be and then just sort of roll over it with that cotton swab and soak up all the excess moisture and there you go simple as that decal in place there's another little trick you can do which uh, requires a little bit of finesse but you can get the hang of it pretty easily put some mark setter on there and get this in the camera frame I'm going to take my cotton swab and just oops, go like that and the decal is actually on the end of the cotton swab you can't really see it because it's a white decal but it's on the end of the cotton swab press it down onto the part and there you go and then it's just the same as before position it exactly how you want it and remove the excess water so that is how uh, I apply just a small little caution marking or something like that now you are going to come across larger decals eventually and uh, eventually you're also going to need to put decals over panel lines so here I've got a relatively big decal I'm gonna soak this in the water real quick let that set for a few seconds a larger decals can be kinda tricky and uh, they you definitely need to take them nice and slow and be patient with them but uh, when you do they can look really really nice now this is actually a decal I got from Samuel Decal. His decals are not pre-cut. Uh, every decal you get from Bandai is going to be pre-cut. Uh, all these other third-party decals I've got from HiQ Parts and Wave and uh, Vertex, those are all pre-cut, but Samuel's aren't, and occasionally you will come across decals that aren't pre-cut. So I've taken my hobby knife and I've cut out along the edge of the decal uh, not getting exactly along the edge uh, but enough that most of the decal most of the excess decal film is gone so all that's left is just going to be a thin layer around the edge of the decal so let me test and see if this is ready to go I think so alright what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the decal over this panel on right here put my mark setter I'm going to get my tweezers and I'm going to gently slide that over oops, the part right there and this is just a scrap part this isn't going to be for any project or anything so ordinarily this would be a very very odd place for this decal but for the sake of demonstration I needed to put a large decal over a panel line and this seemed like a perfect opportunity so I'm going to roll out the moisture also when you're doing this another thing I forgot to mention uh, when you're soaking up the excess moisture and Mr. Mark Setter you're also going to be on the lookout for air bubbles occasionally you'll have air bubbles get stuck up under the decal and what that causes is an effect we call silvering which is 
uh, when air is stuck up under the decal and then the decal dries it has sort of a silver look to it and it just doesn't look very good so while you're getting rid of this moisture you're also going to want to be working all those little air bubbles out so that you won't have any silvering on your decal all right so I've got my decal over the panel lines here and it's sort of laying over the de uh, the panel line not really going down into it and that's going to cause some problems when it comes to the panel lining process that's when Mr. Mark Softer comes in place also uh, this is useful for uh, when you are going along like over the edges like if, if I took the decal over the edge here I guess I could have done that but I don't really feel like re-wetting the decal and doing that now, but you get the point. So I'm going to put some on there. You don't, Again, you don't need a whole lot. And you just let that sit for a few seconds and then just start going over it. Now this is where you'll really want to be careful because what this Mr. Mark Softer does is it softens the decal film so that it can work down into those panel lines and stuff but it makes the decal very very delicate at the same time so you want to be very very gentle you'll notice I'm not using a circular motion or I'm not uh, going across I'm doing a rolling motion like this just a gentle roll across the decal so that way I don't move the decal I don't tear the decal I don't mess it up or anything then just give it a little dab right along where that panel line is and now as you can see with the glare of the light that decal is nestled quite snugly down into that panel line so now when we do our panel lines we can uh, go right over that and it should look good additionally you can take it one step further and take a hobby knife and gently gently go along that panel line very gently in fact I'm doing it right after applying the decal that would probably be a smarter thing to wait until it's completely dry before doing that but uh, this is a video so I obviously can't wait for the water to evaporate completely so uh, and at this point you are basically ready want, uh, ready to top coat once that is dry. Now this is not a painted part uh, but if it were painted you would do everything the exact same way. Uh, one little thing that uh, you'll want to watch out for, I have noticed that occasionally if you leave Mr. Mark Softer on paint or at least Mr. Color anyway, I've noticed that uh, if it stays on there for too long it'll start to take the paint up uh, when you uh, soak it up with a cotton swab so I wouldn't leave that on there any more than 60 seconds before uh, soaking it up and wiping it away so just keep that in mind on painted surfaces uh, another thing about paint is uh, or just decals in general uh, they go better on a glossy surface uh, you can put water slides on flat and matte paint jobs but they go on much much cleaner much much smoother on a glossy uh, smooth surface so uh, you may want to either use gloss paints like I do I generally just use gloss for everything so that way I don't have to uh, do a gloss top coat before I do my decals and it generally works fine I would never have any problems with that or if you are using matte paint you can uh, do a clear gloss top coat before you do your water slides that would work just as well so that just about wraps up the water slide decal tutorial video and if you have any questions or anything uh, just ask in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer them and hopefully this is a, a better video than my last one so with that I'll see you guys next time.